Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like to welcome you all to a, a very interesting, I hope, I know it will be interesting, but I hope also you will make it even more interesting with your engagement. Uh, dialogue with the uh, Vice President of the World Bank for the MENA region. Uh, we are very happy to host today Mr. Farid Bilhaj. Uh, I'm going to read you a very brief uh, uh, biography of Mr. Belhaj so that you know the context from which we are coming and it would be great if uh, then we will build up on uh, on some of the questions. The, what, what we hope to do today is uh, I will start up with a few questions for Mr. Belhaj and then take it from there. I will definitely open it up to the audience and before uh, we open it up to the audience, and I will remind you again, we would want it to be a dialogue, not a monologue. And we want to allow people to speak and to hear responses so that it is an engagement in thought and not in emotion. So uh, please keep that in mind when we discuss things. And uh, with this, I will take... Uh, few minutes to start with the questions. Mr. Bilhaj is a lawyer by profession with degrees in international law and politics. He took up the position of World Bank Vice President in the Middle East and North Africa uh, less than a year ago. Uh, prior to this, Mr. Bilhaj was Chief of Staff for the President of the World Bank and from 2012 to 2017, he was the bank director for the Middle East in charge of the World Bank work programs in Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Iraq, Iran, and was based in Lebanon. He also served as the World Bank director for the Pacific Department from 20, 2009 to 2012. So he's got that broad vision for us. Mr. Belhaj is a Tunisian national, so uh, also a cousin. A brother and a cousin, you know, the migration from Lebanon during the era past. And I was born in Qatar. Uh -huh. so I'm really, really See, the, 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 roots, the roots are here. <laughs> the roots are here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Damon. Damon. So, uh, with this icebreaker, it will be good to start with the heavy hitting questions that we have put together. And. Uh, <laughs> and we all ask everybody to have an open mind and uh, uh, good thoughts to go forward. What we want is to build on this, to build. Last, last week we had the Lebanon Water Forum, which was well received and well spoken of. And uh, we want to build on this. We want to make this a better, uh, develop better understanding of some aspects. So I will start with a question that keeps coming to us all the time, whether as uh, academics or members of civil society or you know, regular people. Uh, the thought is that it took the UN until 2010 to recognize that the right to safe and clean drinking water and sanitation is a human right. And the vision, this vision, also was underlined and emphasized in this year's uh, World Water Day theme, uh, leaving no one behind. So the focus is on humans and people and not leaving anyone behind. If we look at some of the work that's being done around the world, and I'm not targeting, I'm not saying the World Bank or anybody, it's development work world around the world especially in the water sector, is blamed by, by many to follow a conventional approach, where the focus is on the economic aspects of growth and profit. And there is a difference here between uh, some of the, the two approaches. So how do we resolve this seeming contradiction? Maybe not a contradiction, but how do we resolve such thoughts and, and make sure that development projects do care for the underprivileged or do not leave anyone behind and do not break anyone's uh, bank, as it were. So I will start with this question and uh, yes, please. First of all, thank you very, very much for the, uh, for the welcome and thank you for you know, allowing me to come back 
to uh, to this place where I had a number of me of meetings and exchanges and uh, and dialogues with, uh, with 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 friends and colleagues and it's really really great to be uh, at uh, at AUB. It's really great. And with Aysan Faris Institute, of course, we have a very a absolutely a very long his history. Um, that and we frankly we learned so much out of discussions like this one. It, on, on, on all sectors. And since we are talking about water, we'll have a very fluid conversation today. You know? <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure that you know, we go back and forth and that all the currents are, um, are accommodated. Uh, you, you, you're absolutely right. There, there is this conversation, this debate, not just for water, actually, for, abs for, for absolutely every sector when we engage in development. You, know, you have the two facets of it, very much complementary. You need, obvious, obviously, if you are doing development, it's for, for humans to develop, for people's lives to get improved. Uh, I'll talk about water in a second, but it's true for absolutely everything. When, when one talks about energy, when one talks about uh, health, education, you know, the, the uh, unit of account, if I may say, mm -hmm. is the human being, is the person. And this is what we are, we are, we are uh, focusing on and what, what we are doing. When it comes to water, <clears throat> You know, I'm not going to go into Arabic and uh, who, who is high? It's basically human beings and, and everything else. You know, so we really need to make sure that water, you know, and the way water is, is, is managed and the way water is developed uh, is done through a very sustainable way. Sustainable, both in terms of the natural, using it as a as a, as a natural res resource that could actually be depleted if we are not dealing with it, or engaging with it, or managing it in the right way, but also that could become, you know, uh, prohibitive for a number of people, number of countries, uh, and we see it in particular when it comes to the Middle East, uh, where, where where water is has been seen and is still is as a possible you know, uh, vector for, 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 for war mm -hmm. and for conflict and for tension. So we, it is really a precious commodity and we need to engage with it and, and make sure that we, know, we, don't, we don't waste it. And, and if there is one place where, wasted, where water is wasted, frankly, it is Lebanon. I spent five years here and I remember having long discussions with a number of friends. You know, I remember the group of the Blue Gold uh, colleagues and others coming to the office and, and we had conversations. They would give me numbers that are really staggering, staggering. like, you know, uh, the, uh, um, the, the, the rain that falls on Lebanon every year, how much, you know, in terms of, of billions of, uh, of cubic meters, how much is captured, how much goes into, uh, uh, into, the, into, the, into the soil and how much goes straight into the sea. A huge, de you know, waste of a very precious resource. How can you manage that? How can you make sure that that precious resource is captured? And you know, what can we do about it? This is a broad picture. When I used to live here, you know, during the summer, I would, I would go see friends in Ashrafi or Dahia, etc. And what I see is tanker trucks delivering water to uh, buildings. Beirut, Lebanon. 21st century, and we are still waiting for the tanker trucks to come and to give us, you know, a few water to wash and to and to and to and to and to and to, and to, and to drink. Let alone the water that is being wasted when it comes to uh, agricultural, etc. So, you know, there is an emergency. There is a need here to one place the human being at the center of it, center of development, and obviously at the center of what you are doing, and making sure that whatever we do when it comes to water is economically viable, sustainable, ecologically viable, and sustainable. It's absolutely f fundamental. And that's what we are trying to do, you know, in conversation with the Lebanese government uh, and other actors, stakeholders uh, within Lebanon, but also mo much more broadly, you know, when it comes to the region. You know, we have a number of uh, very successful water projects from Morocco all the way to Iran. These are, these are the countries that we, that we engage in uh, when it comes to the Middle East and North Africa. So, you know, for us, we bring whatever best we have and we put it on the table, we open a debate. If somebody has a better idea, please come forth. 
and let's and let's make sure that you know within the you know <laughs> meeting of minds uh, we can we can get to something that makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. And I know that at some point we'll be talking about specific projects in, Le in Lebanon. And I want to assure you that nothing that we have done is coming out of the blue. You know, it is really something that everything has been thought through with the human being at the center of it. This is what we are all about. Thank you. Um, this leads to a multitude of questions and I would just want to start with something that we've been involved with uh, here uh, in, uh, at IFI through a project funded by USAID and uh, managed by DAI and the Lebanon Water Project. We are looking at water security. Mm -hmm. And within water security, we found out that in Lebanon, the most critical aspect is not necessarily the supply demand side or any of the others. It is the way we govern our water sector, and hence the, the topic for today's uh, discussion, governance. And in, in, in part of governance, we found that there is a, an important uh, side, and we all know that there is a participatory uh, aspect that has to be incorporated in governance so that communities and people develop a good buy-in to any a plan, policy, strategy, and then downwards as we go down into projects. And this is, uh, in many times, v quite lacking in Lebanon, in the sense that governance is poor uh, on many levels due to many, as due to many reasons. We we'll then, as we talk, we'll uh, get into this. The investment in the sector has been poor, whether in uh, technical capabilities or uh, structural material or whatnot. But what, is, what has been glaringly lacking, we found, was the uh, issue with participatory approach. And as we know now, some of the projects that are being put forward through banks, uh, funding, or others are uh, sometimes being criticized for this lack of participatory approach. And we found also that it is critical to bring this participatory approach early on, as early as possible in, in, in the game. As So with this uh, long question, <laughs> not yet a question, no, but this is this long preface, where do you think the, the bank, uh, how well do you think the bank has been performing <laughs> In Lebanon specifically, because here we'll, we want to talk about uh, basically Lebanon. We can talk about the region as we go along. How well do you think we're doing here in Lebanon? The bank has been doing, and other donors, in, in, if you know, have been doing with this. Yeah. I, will, I, will, I will focus on the, on, on the bank. Okay. This is the place I know, I, know, I know best in a way. First of all, full agreement. Water governance is fundamental. And by the way, governance when it comes to development in general is, is, is fundamental. If you want something to be sustainable, if you want something to go through the years or the, or the proof of time, you, know, you need to make sure that everybody around uh, that particular sector or that particular project is gathering, owns the project, and for that, you, know, you cannot come and, and, and issue a decree. <laughs> you need to, for people to come and discuss and engage and as I said earlier, you know, banging the heads and, and getting something out of that, of that conversation. So the participatory dimension is absolutely fundamental. And the, the bank, you know, it's sometimes you know, we, we go to, to the excess of it. Sometimes some of our projects get delayed. Well, delayed. Let's say that we could, we could go faster if we, uh, if we make the, the economy of, of a couple of consultations. But what we try to do, in particular in projects that are sensitive, where you know, stakeholders, people living on the ground, you know, are absolutely fundamental to the success of it, we go ahead and consult. For a number of our projects, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the Bissery project, for instance, you know, I was reading the documents. Uh, first of all, I, I was here when, when the whole conversation mm -hmm. operationally started. 
Seriously, I consulted with everybody. At some point, people were saying, you know, were send, sending me SMSs like, you know, there was this guy uh, in Akkar that you haven't yet sp <laughs> spoken to. You know, we tried to go and meet with everybody and really to make sure that people understand what we are doing. And, you know, I met with the head of political parties, almost all of them, one I couldn't for obvious reasons, but all of them I actually met. And we engaged and we talked and we had pushbacks and we explained, you know, same thing with communities, with people sit, sitting on the, on the ground. Now, you will always have, you know, someone who hasn't been consulted. But then you know, they, they raise their hand and we try to engage with them. Now, the issue is how to manage the tension between real substantive consultation and you know, stuff that would delay things forever. So we need to man manage that, that tension. We generally err on the side of more consultation than anything else. But at some point, you need to, to you know, draw some kind of a line. But then again, when you draw the line, it's not the end of the story. You keep engaging and you keep, you keep talking as the you know, projects you know, move, uh, move forward. Because you know what? And we all know that. You know, uh, any operation, any project, any uh, you know, human deed in a way is not something that you know, is static. Mm -hmm. Things move, things change, things evolve. So we need to make sure that people evolve with us or that we evolve with people. We also make sure that we have you know, uh, people, in particular those who live where the projects are being implemented, who can actually ring, ring a bell. Mm -hmm. By the way, guys, something is not, is not right. Something is happening in, 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 in the wrong way for us to adjust and course correct. <clears throat> and obviously, we have a number of those, those, those the, the, the safeguards of the bank that are really, really extremely heavy. And in that sense, heavy in the good sense of the word, you know, it's really, you know, to make sure that we minimize to the maximum uh, any type of slippage. And we saw it many times. Now, you know, lately, we had some, some, some issues with a couple of projects in, in Africa where you know, we were not necessarily looking at every single detail. So we, need, we had to backpedal and review and re-engage and, and keep moving forward. So it is really a dynamic process that we have. And that's why you know, conversations like this one, or like the ones that Saroj and the team are having on a uh, very regular basis are absolutely precious. Because we cannot, again, write a document and say, this is it, this is the Bible, the Quran, the whatever, and that's it. It doesn't work that way, one. And second, you know, we cannot be uh, arrogant enough to say that we know the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. It's not true. You know, we always need to have people you know, ringing the bell and saying, maybe you have missed something here or there. And we are always happy to, to, uh, to engage and to, and to manage you know, as we move forward. Okay, um, I want to open it up to the audience, but I have one question. I have one question before we, yeah, that, that's it. And then I will stop. No, no, that no. will be my, my last question. But in, in, in looking at uh, the document that the bank produced, the strategic assessment of Lebanon's yeah. uh, capital investment plan, uh, the said, one thing stood out in my mind in the preface, a, a, a statement that uh, I'm, I'm going to read. It says that the document... But, but that's the guy who wrote it, huh? So just... <laughs> <laughs> no, but go ahead. I don't know if I... Take, I, I, take full I don't know if I will have any friends I left take, after I, today. I, I take full responsibility. No, 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 no. We, all, we are all responsible for all our actions. No, no. But it's, no, this statement is, is really, to me, uh, symptomatic and critical of how things happen and how we need to get over some of the things. The document, you know, at the end of the abstract, there is this, says that the document will address, uh, will not address crippling barriers in project implementation and infrastructures, which have resulted, sorry, uh, which have resulted in long delays and significant additional costs. This is a very uh, cloaked <coughs> statement saying that it is not necessarily the design that's a problem. It may not necessarily be the consultation that's dragging things on too long. But there is another issue at hand that has to be addressed. 
and that would probably be governance, governance and within that governance, accountability and, trans and transparency in, in actions. This, I have, you know, I would like to know what are the measures that are in place to ensure that there is complete <laughs> transparency and accountability on all projects that are being done. Yep. We had, luckily, uh, when we had Amal uh, on, on, on Wednesday describe this, but I would like us to re-emphasize this because the World Bank and USAID represented here and you also delayed it. But it's good for everybody to know exactly what are these checks that would ensure transparency and make sure that there is accountability. And accountability, I think, transcends just the banks. I mean, you, are, you, you hold your staff accountable. That's, that's, that's commendable. But what about those that are working on projects that are funded by the bank, that are receiving money also from, uh, from the bank. How would you hold governments, institutions accountable and make sure that their actions are also transpar transparent? Yeah, actually it is, it is both a, an easy and a, and a tough question. The easy part of it is that we have developed a large number of instruments, institutions, uh, safeguards that really are extremely efficient. Upstream, you know, uh, competition when it comes to the adjudication of, of, uh, of, uh, of bids. Mm -hmm. Total transparency, total competition, very seldom would you find, you know, kind of the uh, uh, sole source uh, type of engagement. Very, very seldom and at very, very low type of, uh, very well, in, term, in terms of, in terms of uh, uh, financing volume. Very, very low. The very vast majority is, you know, competitive bidding and it's totally open, transparent to everybody. So this is, this is one. When it comes to the um, financial management of our projects, they are, everybody can take a look at how the projects are being disbursed, who is doing what to whom, if I may say. You know, it is totally transparent. This is upstream. Then if there is any doubt, you know, we have institutions uh, uh, INT uh, in, in, in the bank, which is the in investigating uh, in investigative body. If there is any uh, shred of evidence or suspicion that a project may be going through any type of corruption, you know, any one of our staff, any, anybody around mm -hmm. can actually go and engage with INT. And believe me, these guys are very, very tough. They would, dis you know, you have departments right, left, and center mm -hmm. when it comes to companies, you know, uh, play playing light with, uh, with uh, you know, the finances of the bank, or even, or even finances, their own finances where they deal in projects that are financed by the bank, you know. And we have our own internal structures, you know, our ethic and best business conduct uh, department that is really not playing games with this kind of stuff. If you make this public? Yes, absolutely. Every, uh, the INT is totally, totally public. Totally public. You, you know, you don't have every. Actually, every few days, I get, I get a uh, an email from our INT colleague saying, you know, this particular company has been debarred, or this one is is threatened to be, uh, and this is why, and these these are the conditions for it, you know, to come back and to so be eligible. So can access this information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can, you can go on the internet, uh, uh, the the bank web, website, yeah, yeah. and you have that. So in a way, you can, uh, and and we have this policy of. Um, access to information. Every project, project is open. Uh, after a few years, you know, you can look at absolutely everything. For now, whatever is open is what goes to the board. You know, so the project document, and again, as I said, the, uh, all the instruments that make the project actionable, you know, uh, biddings, etc. But then, after a few years, you can actually access absolutely everything, even the memos between, between staff, et cetera. And we say after, three, after a few years, because you need to give time you know, for projects to, uh, to, uh, to develop. And, uh, and you also uh, need to get some kind of a green light from the county director if he or she feels that you know, having those, those, those documents put totally out to the public is not going to be you know, detrimental 
to the relationship you have with some, with some people, because some of the documents actually can become a liability and can actually occasion lawsuits. You know, why are you sending one of my memos to somebody who can actually then take some kind of action on it? On it? But so all I'm saying is that you know we have a very wide array of instruments that allow all of us to be. You know, 100% is something that doesn't exist, but 99.99% sure that every single dollar that is allocated to one of our projects is accounted for at the end. And if somebody has a suspicion, please raise your hand, send something to the World Bank, send something to our country director or to, or to our team. They have an obligation to follow up on it, because if they don't do it, it's their neck. So, so it, is, it is important to keep that in mind. So. Thank you. Uh, we'll follow up. I th I'm, I'm, sh I'm pretty sure we'll get several questions. What I want to start out with is a set of three questions, allow Mr. Belhaj to answer, and then another three. So there are, there's this lady behind Paul, and then Iman, <laughs> and then the guy next to Paul, you're round three, you're second round Paul. He's there. The, the, the center. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, uh, hi, please my, identify yes. yourself so that we can. Uh, my name is Mona Alami. I'm a senior fellow with Atlantic Council and Trans Research. Um, I'm sure I'm Mona Alami, Atlantic Council. Um, I, I missed maybe the first 10 minutes of uh, the questions. I'm just curious how, about how flexible or creative you are when it comes to local partnership in terms of issues where water is a security issue. I'm thinking about examples such as Basra, where we know that, that the drying up of tributaries uh, thanks to you know a plan, uh, dams in Turkey and, uh, and Iran have contributed indirectly to the protests there. I'm thinking about Baghouz, where in the 2000s, Al-Qaeda was able to establish thanks to the tr also the drying up of tributaries there and the fact that farmers didn't have any more jobs. Al-Qaeda was able to recruit within the farming community. So how creative, like in terms of local partnership, when something uh, becomes such a big security issue. Ima. So I'm representing uh, the Ibrahim Abdel Al Foundation for Sustainable Development, Lebanese NGO. Uh, Monsieur uh, Farid, you spoke, uh, I have some concerns for your beginning, your uh, speech. Because you mentioned the blue gold coming to your offices. Blue gold for us is not a reference. You spoke about uh, precipitation in Lebanon. And uh, you didn't mention that we had the very drought uh, years, so we are affected by the climate change. And then you said that there, there is a lot of uh, wasting water in Lebanon. Maybe. I mean, we are not glad with our management of water. But you compared us with the region. Don't forget that the region is semi-arid or arid. We have water relatively, of course, relatively, and I insist on this. So this is why maybe we are wasting water. The others don't, don't have water to waste anyway. Then you spoke, sir, that the human beings should be at the center. This is the first question of Dr. Nadim. Yes, of course, but the nature also is... Uh, everything that is the living on the earth. So we have, of course, to put the human being in the center, but with nature. It goes together. If nature is good, the human beings are good. And uh, putting a human being at the center, uh, you spoke economically and environmentally. I didn't hear social components. So a human in the center was emphasizing on the social component, and then we have peace on uh, planet Earth. For the second the question, I will be very quick. Uh, water governance. Uh, sir, uh, when you establish, and you, we used to speak a lot internationally and locally, we civil society of this involving us and involving the communities. You didn't hear anything we said. Now, now, thanks God, you arrive to the conclusion of the 2030 and no one is left behind and everything that Dr. Nadim spoke. When you came to Lebanon as World Bank, I don't know you personally, but as World Bank, 
and you made a lot of pressure on Lebanon to make the law 221 to have the water establishment. There was no consultation at all. There was a big pressure, and we have uh, uh, with a mess, if I can say, Nav Salah will be not with me. Because, because we, we gave all uh, the uh, responsibilities to this establishment without any enforcement, any human resources, or any uh, fi financial resources. Now, they, they are working very well with what they have, but we have a problem there. What I was afraid of, sir, that when, at that time, is that the World Bank is for private sector, okay? And when we make two, two, the law 221, two, and we say now, whenever we go, we civil society, we say that we have to enforce the public sector, you know. They say, no, they don't work well. We have to, to enter the public sector. And this is wha what made me concerned at that time in the, in the World Bank. And then when, when, when you spoke of the governance, if, if you can tell us how is your mechanism of engaging civil society and grassroots communities. And thank you. Next to Paul. Hello, uh, thank you, Nadim, for your invitation. Uh, this is Robert uh, from ESFD, Economic and Social Fund for Development, uh, talking about water. Uh, we, I have been uh, taking some notes regarding your comments or your uh, discussion. Uh, you've, you've been saying that you've seen in Beirut tankers uh, during summer, meaning there is water and there is a mismanagement. So this is clear. So uh, uh, you as the World Bank, when you, when you make a project or when you uh, give a loan for a, a project, it is supposed that you have a, a feasibility study or whatever. Um, uh, we believe that you are making a lot of mistakes. Uh, maybe it's not uh, uh, it's not related to your uh, policy, like uh, respecting the environment. Uh, this is a big issue in Lebanon. So uh, your projects are contributing in uh, are contributing in um, uh, killing some areas. Uh, talking in special about uh, Bistri, Bistri Dam, for example. Uh, uh, you've been talking about your uh, uh, sustainable projects. So we believe that you can do sustainable projects related if you make some studies, like uh, uh, how to manage the water in <coughs> Lebanon, how to help the government to manage the water. So when you have a public station, for example, giving, uh, and you have a power supply on the public station for eight hours of 24, you will not be able to supply uh, the city with the correct water. So the problem is the, the government's uh, governance, the problem is the, with the management. So uh, We suggest you make more uh, studies to, to give more benefit to the, uh, to the money you are investing in Lebanon. Okay. Okay, so let me, first of all, th thank you for the, for the questions. and. Uh, and as, and as, as, as I said, it's, this is an opportunity for us to, in, to engage and clarify. And if it's not clear enough, we can discuss again. And you would help us, actually, in, in, our, in this conversation. Um, water and security issues. You know, th 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 there are a number of ex examples where, uh, and I'm not just talking about Lebanon, generally speaking. You mentioned a few, a few other uh, ex examples around, around the region. I'll give you, you know, just two examples, and then we can, we can open uh, another conversation. Uh, one of the examples where we believe that you know, water could be a factor for peace rather than for, for conflict is the uh, Red Dead uh, project that actually links uh, the Palestinians, the Israelis, and the Jordanians. And it is a project that's been there forever. A lot of conversation about it, politically very, very sensitive, as anybody can imagine. Uh, but it is one of those very few 
opportunities and possibilities where, you know, Jordan that is lacking water, the Palestinians that are lacking water, can actually, through an, uh, you know, a funding, a funding arrangement and some you know, creative engineering, be able to do a number of things. One is to salvage the Dead Sea. Second, to get water to, uh, to, to, to the people. Uh, and third, possibly, to bring about a conversation that would be more constructive than just confrontation all the time. So this is one of those examples. You know, we in the bank have been involved in, in, in discussing it for years now. You know, we are far from the politics. We look at, you know, what could be good for, 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 for the region. If at some point, you know, those three, you know, uh, states engage and find some kind of a solution, we would be ha happy to help. And we are not the only ones, by the way. There are a number of others. Another example, uh, a few years back, you know, uh, with what happened in, uh, in Iraq and the uh, Mosul Dam that was, you know, uh, close to be destroyed, actually. It would have been havoc all, all, over, all, over, all, over, all over Iraq. Uh, we had our engineers go there and help the Iraqis, not in terms of funding, but in terms of engineer, you know, our engineers going there, understanding the situation, and engaging with the Iraqis, with the Americans and others, to make sure that that dam, the history of which I'm sure you know, is, you know, has been built there more for you know, political reasons than for the uh, sustainability of the place on which, on which he was, his, uh, his, it, is, it is built. You know, this is a place that, is, uh, that, that needs grouting all the time, all the time. You know, talk about you know, uh, sustainability or unsustainability. So we've been there. So uh, two examples where you, know, you make the link between security and water. And when we talk about security, not just the water security, but also security in the broader, in the broader sense. Well, <coughs> the state is our intermediary, but at the end of the day, when, when, when we get to a place where we are actually engaged, uh, we engage with all the stakeholders around. And those two examples, the first one, you know, we are talking to everybody, you know, both civil society and the governments, but the governments need to make the deal. You know, it's not for, and uh, when it comes to Mosul, to be frank, we just it was an emergency. The thing was falling, you know. So we needed to engage ASAP uh, to help, and we engaged with the government of Baghdad at the time, with the government in Erbil at the time, and with a number of partners of uh, of Iraq. Remember, and that was the time when uh, uh, Daesh was was sitting in, in Iraq and, and threatening to to explode the whole thing. Uh, the lady behind you, behind Paul, Iman, Iman, Iman. Iman. Uh, look. Uh, obviously, Blue Gold is not, is not the only game in town. I, I just mentioned them because I, I met with them, and I saw the numbers that they were put on the table, which jive with the numbers that you know, our people have and the numbers that we hear about. Yes, I mean, there is a huge waste of water in this place. Now, it's not because we have water that we need to waste it. <laughs> we have water, we need to, to, to the contrary, to try to maximize it. And talking about you know, uh, regional uh, cooperation on water, you are blessed with this water. This country is blessed with this water. Can we imagine ways, seriously, to have regional cooperation and integration and get, in many ways, creatively, to get Lebanese water to be going to other places around here, whether it is Jordan or whether it is, whether it is Syria? Why not? Why not? Why can't, we, why can't we just think beyond the immediate horizon and think about you know, down the stretch. That's, that's where, you know, that the, the Middle East and North Africa region is the least, it's what? Very dangerous. Why? Because we have the population growth, we have the climate change, and when you see people are having their waters on Hasbani and Wazrani, and then if in 2003,000, I don't know. Yeah, let's not go there. Well, I'm, it's not a question of talking about Lebanese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But resist what? And we are, I don't know what. 
It is, it is not acceptable. What our share I'm, I'm sorry. Let us be satisfied first. Yes. Yeah. Exactly, but I'm not, I'm not saying that. You are saying now to share our water. No, and, no, 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 no. I'm not saying that you have to share your water. Let us manage our water. Okay, you know what? Let me tell you something, Amen. And then go, go and waste your water. This no, is what, this I'm what not you want? going to so waste our saying? water. The civil so society will not shut up anymore. Me? Finish. What are you telling Look me? Look at our youth. What they will not shut up anymore. What are you telling me? You are telling me the I am telling you that water. now what, what you said, it is not acceptable in our what country. Is, what, what have I said? You said what why you said? don't share you, your water with neighborhood. I did say that. You said, I said that you have what I understood. a surplus of water. We don't have yet. We don't yes, know yet. Yes, exactly. That's no. the point. Maybe no. you can open your mind just a little bit. I That's am exactly opening my the mind. the point. That's exactly the point. You have a lot of water. Who that said is, we have a lot of water? You know what? Very easy. How much, how much water did, uh, how much rain did you get this year? Give me, give me how much. Maybe you can tell us. Give me how sir. much. And then you multiply that over the surface the, 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 uh, the, of, of this territory, and you find that you are talking about between 8 and, uh, and, and 9 billion cubic meters. From where, from where you get your, your numbers? May I, just a second. No, no, no. It is not acceptable, Iman, Doctor Iman, will you be? It is Iman, not acceptable. Iman, Iman. Iman, Iman, Iman. This is, let us, Iman, let us have a discussion. Let us have, Iman, it is not, this is, la, la, uh, yeah. this is why I am reacting. I'm seeing Simon, what is happening. Simon. Iman, Iman, Iman. Iman, Iman, let us, Iman, it is not about one person. Iman, it is not one person's discussion. Iman, it is not one person's discussion. Okay? There are others, yes, I know. But let, let someone, Ya Allah. Iman, Iman. Thank you. No, listen. We need to give. We need to give opportunity for others to speak. This is. Others are. There are plenty of others that can speak and have things to say. And if we keep it just low, I'm not talking only to you, Iman. Okay. So if we keep it open and discuss rationally, please, it will be appreciated. The next set of questions, if I may, we have Paul and Tony Nimr. And uh, there's a gentleman at the very back. OK? So let's start with uh, Paul. OK. Marhabo. Uh, English? We live with them. Whatever. OK. Um, uh, I'm Paul Abirashid. I'm the president of Lebanon Eco Movement, and we are part of a, a national <laughs> campaign to, uh, to save the Bisri Valley. Uh, I'm French educated, so I'll try to find my English words. Why don't you go ahead in French? Hey, no, no, I'm not Okay, 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 not a problem. First thing, I'm going to talk about water security, but with a holistic approach, when we talk about يعني نحن كبيئيين ما بننظر للامور من ناحيه وحده يعني في فود سيكوريتي في كلايمت تشينج في سوشيال في 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 سستينبل ديفلوبمنت في عده امور بتدخل غير بس الحاجه الى المياه من هيك بدفعنا عن مرج بسري يلي هو المرج هو الارض الزراعيه الوحيده في جبل لبنان ومنطقه اثريا غير مكتشفه إلى جانب الأهمية الحرجية يلي بتتخطى 20 مليون كيلوغرام من يعني امتصاص الكربون بالسنة في حين أنه كل حملات التجير اللي صارت بلبنان خلال 13 سنة قدروا ب 5 مليون كيلوغرام بالسنة 5 وبسري 20 مليون كيلوغرام من هيك ما رح فوت بالتفاصيل بدي اسال ثلاث اسئله بس لانه صرنا نلبس عوينات اول شغله حكيت حضرتك على على انه المي... في هدر بلبنان والمي بتروح على البحر بيئيا بيئيا 
الفود سيكيورتي مش بس اكل فود سيكيورتي يعني سمك سمك بالنهر وسمك بالبحر والانهر كلنا بنعرف وقت تعمر سد اسوان شو كان الامباكت السلبي على البحر المتوسط من ناحيه الاسماك لانه الغذاء اللي كان يجي لاسماك المتوسط كان يجي من نهر النيل ويصب البحر الى جانب الـ 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 الرمول اللي يعني مثلا شاطئ سور مكون من وراء الـ الـ يعني الريزيدو اللي بينزلوا بين نهر النيل ف فدونك هيدي النظريه انه نضلنا نقولها انه المي رايحه هدر على البحر وهي ما بتتخطى ال 20 ل 30% من المي الجوفيه بلبنان ما فينا نحن ما بنقبل فيها. النقطه الثانيه هي الالترناتيفز وقت اللي حضرتك يمكن كنت استاذ بالحج وقت اللي تم قرار سد بسري بلبنان هل درست البدائل؟ نحن اليوم بعد ما دخلنا بهيدا الملف تبين انه في دراسات عديده بتبين انه مشكله بيروت تنحل باشهر وبكلفه كثير قليله والمي موجوده ومثل ما عم بيحكوا كل الناس الغلطه هي بسوء الاداره مش بمصادر المياه، ثاني سؤال الكونسلتيشن قلت حضرتك من شوي انه وصلت على عكار يسالوكم على على سد بسري بقدر اقول قدام كل الناس اللي موجودين معنا بالقاعه ولا جمعيه بيئيه تم استشارتها بي وهي الاي اي اي منشور على الانترنت يعني فيهم كل الناس يدخلوا يقروا دراسه الاثر البيئي وراح يشوفوا انه من الحضور لم يكن هنالك اي جمعيه بيئيه هيدي شغلة وإذا بيقدروا الناس الموجودين معنا يعدوا كم شخص من المنطقة حضر هيدي اللقاءات أو كم أونر للأراضي حضر بتشوفوا أنه الأرقام ما بتتجاوز صفر فاصلة أو خمسة فاصلة حسب يمكن الشباب هلا حافظين الأرقام أكثر ثالث نقطة هل صغيته أنا هلا مضطر لبس كرافات لأنه كنا بلقاء مع السي إن إر إس بسرائيل الحكومة الحكي اللي بنسمعه من السي ان ار اس بنتعجب انه ليش كل المشاريع ما بتستشير المركز الوطني للبحوث العلميه؟ كل الدراسات رح اسمي اثنين منهم موضوع بناء السدود على اراضي كارستيه وفي فوالي طالع دراسات من السي ان ار اس بتحذر بتقول بالحرف الواحد بجبل لبنان لا يمكن بناء السدود كل جبل لبنان له السببين كارست وفولتس هيدي نقطه النقطه الثانيه السيانوبكتيريا هلا كان باللقاء الدكتور كمال سليم موجود جربت تحشر فيه انه يا دكتور شو قصه السيانوبكتيريا مزبوط انه القرعون هلا نظيف قال لي بول السيانوبكتيريا تحت هلا مش مبين السيانوبكتيريا بس هيدي مثل الكانسر ما بتروح اعطاني رقم ثاني بخوف قال لي 60% من الاحواض المائيه بكندا مضروبه بالسيانوبكتيريا وبعده العالم ما قدر يحل مشكله السيانوبكتيريا طيب كيف بالمشروع تبع استدراج المياه الى بيروت في 60 مليون متر مكعب من المي جاي من القرعون جاي بالسيانوبكتيريا يلي بيعتبر دكتور كمال سليم انها مسمه ولا يمكن لمحطه الوردنيه ان تعالجها يعني بس نكون واضحين فيها تشيل الرمل فيها تشيل البرغوت بس ما فيها تشيل السيانوبكتيريا اخر سؤال حقيقه اخر سؤال هو دي بس وات اباوت ترانسبيرنسي اوكي بترانسبيرنسي قرينا بالاي اي اي وما راح اقول اسم المعمل لانه نحن البيئيين ما مش شغلتنا نشهر بس وين ترانسبيرنسي اذا تم تسميه معمل الاسمنت يلي بده يصب البطون بسد بسري مثلا مثلا هل ممكن قبل ما نعمل المشروع نعرف ونحدد اي المعمل هيدي واحد من اصل م... أه هلا انا ما حبيت سمي مش مش هذا الموضوع موضوع موضوع مش موضوع هو عم نحكي بالترانسبيرنسي أه بس انا كمان مش هن الشباب كمان مشان الشباب الموجودين هون لازم يعرفوا انه نحن لليوم نحن ضلينا على سنه ونص نعمل ديسكشنز مع الورد بانك 
والاكسبرتس تبع لبنان يواجهوا الاكسبرتس تبع الورد بانك وهون خلونا ننتبه لشغله ولا وزاره الطاقه ولا مجلس الانماء والاعمار سمع لنا في حين انه مع الورد بانك صار حوار وانما بنتمنى على الورد بانك مش يكون الحوار طرشين انه ياخذوا الورد بانك بكل الهموم يلي نحن عم نقدم لهم اياها خطيا وبالنهايه سمعنا من استاذ ساروج قال شغله كثير مهمه باحد اللقاءات قال اذا هيدا المشروع ما كان له كان له كان هارمفل وما كان في له بنفيت لا من وقفه فلازم يعرفوا الكل لا حتى نقول اللي علينا اللي معنا اللي علينا انه لا نحن رح نكمل معركتنا لايقاف سد بسري يعني المدمر وبنشكر وبنطلب من الورد بانك خاصه هلا استاذ بالحاج عملوا فينا ضرب بسد جني تما يخلونا نوقفوا اغتصبوه قصوا كل الاشجار وساعتها قالوا لنا روحوا ناضلوا قصوا كل الاشجار هذا اللي نحن خايفين انه يعملوه ببسري دمروا الاثار يقطعوا الاشجار وبعدين يقولوا لنا ما بقى عندكم قضيه لتحموا مرج بسري شكرا <تصفيق> توني اف اي ماي خلينا ويل جيف مستر بلحاج تشانس يو اسك فايف كويستشنز اور سيكس سو ذات نو يو هاف ا ا جود سيت اوف كويستشنز ذات نيد تو بي انسرد سو افتر مستر بلحاج انسرز يورز وي موف تو بروفيسور نمر اند ذن تو ذا جنتلمان باك ذير اوكي فيرست اوف اول تو ثينكس وان ا كابل اوف كويستشنز ذات اي دين انسر بيفور اي ويل اي ويل انترتين ذيم بات ثانك يو فيري ماتش for two things one for the constructive comments and it is true uh, that you know we want to engage with you and every anybody, anybody else and if there are you know facts and evidence obviously we take them into consideration this project has started i wasn't even born i think neither of us and studies have been conducted one after the other and after the other all we can say at this particular juncture is that there is enough evidence that this project is a viable project this is out of the studies now again you know you have your own views i'm not saying that uh, but all of those studies have led us to not only believe but you know to engage on this project so you mentioned the environmental the, you know conversation and the issues related to the cultural heritage etc I, I, I went there, and I saw how beautiful the place is. I'm not saying no. And actually, I'm saying yes, <laughs> it's actually beautiful. And I saw you know, those uh, religious uh, places and cultural heritage places that are there. And you know, and I'm sure that the team has told you that we are, in, as part of the project, these will be dis displaced and respected, each piece of stone of it will be displaced and respected. So in that sense, we are really doing anything that we can to make sure that there is no harm at that, at that stage. Now, there are other harms that, 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 that you are talking about. Again, happy to look and happy to engage again with you and get more of the evidence. If that evidence is there, you know, we don't wake up in the morning with one aim in our life, you know, to destroy things or to, you know, get, get, get people into odd, you know, into odd situations. To the contrary, what we want is to help as much as we can. And going back to the conversation we had earlier that was a bit heated, you know, what, what we see as a group, as a bank, and what, as you, as population of, of Lebanon, there is a tremendous potential in hydro in this place, huge. And what we see is that there is a lot of waste, a lot of waste. And you're right. I mean, when you talk about the the uh, the uh, the Sed uh, Ali in in Egypt, yes, there were some issues. But here, some of the studies are showing that the water that's actually getting into the ocean is having, you know, a very negative impact on coastal erosion and on you know fish, etc. So there is also that conversation to be had. Not necessarily linked to the to, 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 to the dam, but in general, there is a conversation to be had there. You may not agree, but this is one of the studies that we had. 
other uh, issues, people have been talking, and I, I agree, there is a huge uh, concern about the issue of you know, seismology and whether, okay, we know that. We got the best experts for years, not just one set. A number of people came one after the other, looked at it, and had two conclusions. <laughs> one is that the dam will not provoke any uh, type of uh, you know, uh, earthquake. And what about people? I haven't finished. I'll come. Can, can we please have a conversation so, and not interrupt? So two things. You one, have a chance to ask. Then one, the dam is not going to be provoking anything. And if there is anything, the dam is strong enough to resist, you know, to, to a very large extent, what our, all of our seismologists have put on the table. Now, again, if you have a study that says the contrary, and if it, the argument is strong, Obviously, we will take a look at it. We don't want to be responsible for any harm done here. That's for sure. So again, let me, again, thank you for being constructive, because I think that's the way to go. But also, please understand where we are coming from. We are not coming from a place where we want to sell money. We, we, we don't. Actually, when you look today at the portfolio in Lebanon, we have tons of money sitting with parliament and with government. It's go, going nowhere. And in my view, we should just you know, bring that money back and forget it. So we, we really want to help as much as we can. If you have a better way for us to help, we are there and we're happy to do it. And one last point. The whole conversation about the World Bank and private sector and public sector. Hey, when I come to, I lived in Lebanon for five years. If there is one thing that unites all of Lebanon is the fact that the government is not working well. That the public sector is not working well. Well, do you want to give them even more? You know, what we are trying to do is make sure that there is a governance system that allows the public sector to be as efficient, transparent, and honest as it should be, but at the same time, give the opportunity to the private sector, which is, you know, as everybody knows, more efficient when it comes to you know, the economics of things, to have its, its role here. And frankly, again, there too, if you have any better option, any other alternative, and you mentioned alternatives, khiarat, very happy to consider those and very happy to engage with you at every stage. And I know that the team, Saroj and, and the others, are now engaging with you. Happy to you know, have that engagement. But let's just get to a place where we, 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 ag we agree on the way forward. Cannot be sitting there pending for, forever. It would be a shame because it is a waste. OK. Uh, Professor Nimr, if I may. My name is Dr. Tony Nemer. I am assistant professor of geology here at the AUB. I thank you so much for giving us the opportunity for being here. I wasn't planning on talking about geology and seismology at all about the BC Dam, but you just mentioned something which I cannot keep quiet about. You just mentioned that the dam will not provoke earthquakes. I'm not sure. Do you have any geological background to make that statement, uh, sir? Personally, no, but we have studies from people who have all of that geological background. Personally, okay. no, I don't. I guess I have seen all of those studies you are mentioning, and with all due respect, those studies are not complete. I'm not here to talk about those things, definitely. But the statement you just made is really big. If I were not a geologist and were not involved, I wouldn't have made that statement, and I say it very respectfully. I hope you accept it from me. Absolutely. Thank you. I am actually here, I am actually here not to talk about that, not to talk about geology of the Bissi Dam. I am here just to talk about a little bit about corruption, which the Lebanese government nowadays are at least claiming on fighting it. You mentioned at the beginning that there are some safeguards of the bank regarding several things, including corruption, I would assume. And Dr. Fajalla mentioned something about accountability. I have a question about the World Bank coming from a personal very good idea and connotation about the bank being away from corruption. This is the way I think about the World Bank. But I have a question about conflict of interest in the World Bank, how the World Bank sees conflict of interest. The reason I'm asking about that because 
back to the Bessie Dam, I recently knew from, from the Council for Development and Reconstruction here in the Lebanese Republic, that one of the experts of the World Bank experts that were on the panel of experts of experts to review the BC Dam, the guy called Professor Mustafa Erdik. Mustafa? Mustafa Erdik, and he is Turkish. And he was involved in a, a side study, personal study he did for the Council for Devo Development and Reconstruction. Is this something you would consider conflict of interest as a World Bank expert b doing a study for the Lebanese Republic about a project he's overseeing? Is this something you would mm -hmm. consider conflict of interest? I'm not saying, saying something out of the blue. I have the proof for that report. I brought it for you. It's called Assessment of Site-Specific Earthquake Hazard for Bisri Dam, Lebanon, prepared by four experts, the first of whom is Professor Mustafa Erdik. I printed it out, and it's here for your reference. Thank you. Thank you. Let me, uh, a couple of words. Uh, going back to your first point, uh, the, 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 statement that was, the statement that was made related to the geology, as I, as I mentioned, is out of studies from experts of the World Bank. And you know, we at the World Bank, we, you know, we know many things, but we don't know everything. So I am not a geologist. I rely on what my people say. That's how an institution works. Otherwise, it becomes messy. Uh, on, on, on the issue of corruption and conflict of interest, it's, it's important. What, I don't know whether my colleagues knew about it, but we will discuss it. But there is, you know, we, we have, again, talking about institutions, we have a body within the bank who could take a look at it, go into the details of it, and make a determination as to whether, you know, having this kind of dual uh, reporting, in a way, uh, is something that would constitute that. In particular, if, you know, uh, the conclusions the, you know, would, would go in, the, in a direction that would make people a bit suspicious. So we will take a look at it. You have my word uh, you know, for it. And, uh, and we'll get back to you for sure. So this will go to my colleagues dealing with this. And we'll, and we'll obviously get back to you. And thank you again. The gentleman back there. يعطيكم العافية بس هم زين الدين ناشط بيئي مستر بالحاج in the uh, first of uh, your speech you uh, told us uh, that uh, Allah خلق من الماء كل شيء حي ونحن في لبنان نعاني من حكومة الفساد التي تريد أن تعمل من الماء كل شيء ميت نحن في لبنان إذا بتضرب عصاية بالأرض I can express myself uh, better in Arabic إذا بتضرب عصاية بالأرض وأكيد أنت عم تفهم علي بتطلع ماي We have the, the largest reserve of, of water in the Middle East إذا ما خبروك خليهم خبروك أنتوا بكون دمروا uh, الطبيعة أجمل طبيعة بلبنان طبيعة خصبة جدا uh, نحن أنا ابن جبل نحن منسميها الوادي تبعنا يعني نحن بسقفتنا عنا الوادي وعنا الكروم يعني بيقول لك انت وين رايح بتقول له انا طالع على الكرم جيب رزقي جيب حياتي جيب اكل ولادي وبتقول له وين رايح بيقول لك نازل على الوادي ازرع لولادي انتو عم تدمروا لنا اخصب مرج زراعي بلبنان في اكثر من مليون ونص شجرة مسمرة في حياة لبشر عم بتعيش من هيدي الأرض هيدي الأرض إلها علاقة بسقفتنا بتاريخنا بعاداتنا بوجودنا بكرامتنا بتعرف الإنسان في عيش بلا أكل وبلا شرب بس ما في عيش بلا كرامة الحكومة اللبنانية إذا ما حدا مخبرك أنا ما عبلومك عشي بس هي أفسد حكومة بالعالم من أفسد الحكومات وهيدا أنا تبه ما عبتخبر ما عبتخبر خبرية 
هيدا بالتقرير واكيد الورد بانك لازم يكون بيعرف هيدي الخبريه واذا ما بيعرفها طامه كبرى فبنتمنى عليكم وخاصه بعد وجود تقارير كثير كبيره وعريضه وطويله وعريضه بتقول انه هيدي الارض فيها دمار اقتصادي على الناس فيها دمار اجتماعي فيها دمار ثقافي دمار وجودي فنحن ما بنقدر نتحمل هذه التبعات لبناء سد بهيدي المنطقه فضلا عن الدمار الاقتصادي انتم ما رح تقدموا لنا اياه كدو ابدا انتم رح تدفعونا مليارين دولار تقريبا مع فوائد الدين اللي على اللون ما شيء وبده يرجع يحطوا له محطات تكرير وصيانه انت بتعرف بس تعمل بروجكت معي هون بدك تعمل له كونترا صيانه والشباب عندنا يعني شو بدي خبرك حدث ولا حرج يعني نفسهم ما بتقول عن شيء لا ثانك يو لكم هيدا حبيت اقوله The gentleman and then Ms. Huey. No, no, Ms. Huey. If you don't, if you want to, and then we answer. And then we'll come back. Test. Okay. You talked about the studies that you have and that justify the project of the Bistri Dam. However, in 2010, the studies said that we have water scarcity. I mean, the studies that we that you relied on said that we have water scarcity and therefore we need to build more dams. Today, the minister Gibran Basile and yourself are saying that we need to build more dams to export water to Jordan, to Cyprus, and I don't know where to as well. I mean, give me a break. You just want to build dams because dams are more profitable than any other water management that is sustainable and that is comprehensive. You are funding the Bistri Dam through the CDR. I don't want to talk about the CDR because I believe everyone here knows what the Council for Development and, and Reconstruction really is. Majlis al wal Amar. The same CDR worked on the National Physical Master Plan in 2005 and was approved in 2010. This master plan classifies the Bistri Valley as one of the most important landscapes in the country and one as one out of five uh, uh, regional natural parts. So the same institution is saying one thing and the opposite. Also, the CDR in 2014 collaborated with the German Federal Institute for Geoscience and Natural Resources and says, literally, the Bistri Dam will not be able to provide the same quality and low mineralization of raw water as is available in the Jaita catchment area that currently provides Beirut with 70% of its water. It also says that the Jaita catchment area can provide enough water for the greater Beirut area, and the water at its source has an excellent quality. It is more sustainable to invest in the protection of these precious water resources than in treatment and conveyance of other more far away resources to Beirut. And we're talking about the Karaon Dam and the Bistri Dam in the, in the south. Also, the Bistri Dam was approved in contradiction to the strategic environmental assessment of the National Water Sector Strategy that says that we need to scale back the dams program in Lebanon and that we need to take the alternatives that are available. Also, the UNDP in 2014 said that we don't have water scarcity. We actually have water surplus and, and, and particularly groundwater sur surplus. So why are we leaving 70,000 illegal wells operating across the country? Why aren't we working on legalizing and reforming the groundwater sector? Why aren't we working on fixing the physical failures of the, of the water grid that is leaking more than 40% of its flow? The studies you are referring to, like for the approval of the Bistri Dam, say that the water balance is very old, that no data on, on groundwater is, is available, and that no monitoring of illegal wells is being done. So how, how are we funding projects with billions of dollars and with, uh, with all these environmental and social impacts without having these necessary studies to be done prior to these uh, financement? 
Also, I want to comment about the idea that the Bistri Valley is beautiful. I, I don't see it as beautiful. I see it as a land with, with millions of square meters of agricultural lands that people are, are benefiting from. It's part of their local economy. It's not just beautiful. It's, it's a whole ecological and social ecosystem. And uh, finally, you have to be quick, please. Yeah, yeah, finally, I will add to what uh, my colleague Paul said that the free flowing rivers are not a wastewater. I mean, we're in 2019. This is a 60s and 50s approach to water management. We need free flowing rivers for our economy, for our nature, and for our uh, uh, identity as well. So, thank you. Uh, Simon? So, Ms. Susie Hwaik, please. Bonjour. Uh, hi, Kelkon. Nashitin Abiyin. Good morning, good afternoon, Mr. Belhaj. It's uh, very nice to uh, meet you finally, uh, Mr. Saroj. Um, I represent the Ministry of Energy and Water. I am the um, advisor to the minister, thank you, to the minister. And uh, I would like to, uh, I will not go into the details of the questions. Mr. Farid uh, answered all of your questions. I just want, uh, I would like to invite you to um, First of all, have a look at the, uh, at the uh, National Water Sector Strategy of 2010 and 2012 and see that it covers all of your concerns. Uh, look, when nobody interrupted you when you were speaking, do not interrupt. Uh, so, uh, I, will, I will reassure you one thing. We are in the process of starting the update of the National Water Strategy, and we will be revising the number of dams that was uh, conceived in 2010. But let me uh, highlight something very important and reassure Mrs. Iman. Is she still here? No. no. Uh, Mrs. Iman was afraid that we will be uh, selling our water abroad, and I am sure that Mr. Belhaj did not mean this at all. Uh, the only idea is that we have enough water, but in order to, um, uh, to benefit from this water, we have to manage it properly, and we have to storage. Storing water is not an option. It is a must, okay? It has to be studied, modeled, hydrologically, uh, but it is, uh, it is one of the uh, essences of water management in the world. Okay, so this is, uh, this is one. Two, we cannot keep on relying on our groundwater. Yes, we have a very, uh, a very good reserve, but this should be our, again, strategic reserve. So um, we have to... to uh, Please. Ah, it is renewable if you have enough uh, precipitation. If you don't have enough precipitation, if you are extracting more than, uh, you, uh, more than the precipitation you're getting, it is not renewable. So uh, I advise you to, uh, to, to go more into the, uh, the uh, hydrology and hydrogeology of Lebanon and everything in order to understand how it works. Yes, we have 70,000 illegal wells. But also we have a, a procedure for well permitting at the uh, ministry and we are doing our best to have all of our wells uh, with permits. If the citizens are not reacting or responding to our uh, openness to, uh, to permitting, this is something else. Excuse me. I didn't understand. Please, look, look. Sorry, ma'am. Ma'am. Uh, let us, let, a, sorry, a Susie, just a second, just a second. Uh, the least that is expected of people attending in this uh, hall is politeness and respect. Show it to others like you want it shown to you. If you cannot handle this or you are incapable of doing this, please use the doors. No, okay. Uh, Mr. Let us Mr. have a, a, a rational 
and polite لا, and دكتور, respectful uh, discussion. Dr. Nadim, uh, we, are not, we are not on two sides of, uh, of the river. We are on the same side. We are citizens. We want the same thing that you want. We want water. We want good services. We want, we want governance. We want, we want good management. Uh, we, we want what you want. We, we, are, we don't come from another planet. لحظة بعد بعد ما وصلت على الانفايرمنت بعد ما حكيت عن بسري وما حكيت عن شيء خاص بالانفايرمنت I'm still talking about water management I'm still talking about our water resources our underground water and our surface water okay so uh, uh, this is this is in terms of of uh, of water balance Okay, so uh, please, yes, let us be, let us communicate. Uh, it is not only the environment, uh, Mr. Paul. We are, I am very keen on the environment as well, but there, there are uh, priorities, okay? There are, people need, need to stop uh, paying double and triple their water bills. They need to have water 24-7. We need to develop water sources, okay? so. ما تقول لا ما فيك تقل اه حسيتك عم تزبي راسك انه لا بعدين في شغله انا قلتها هداك النهار بالووتر فورم برجع بكررها هلا آه نحن بوابنا مفتوحه بالوزاره اوكي آه شو ما عندكم شكاوى شو ما عندكم افكار يو ار سينج ذات ذير ار اذر مور سستينبل اوبشنز تو بروفايدنج اند سبلاينج بيروت اوكي ليتس ديسكاس ذس كم اوفر اند وي كان ديسكاس ات Okay, Buebna Maftuha, you are all welcome to whatever you need to say, just express it, but please, whenever we need to express something, let's express it in a communicative way, hear the other end of the story and try to be convinced by the other end of the story. مش إنه بس أنا بدي أقول اللي عندي إياه وكل شيء عم بتقوله أنت غلط، لأنه نحن مستعدين نسمع كل شيء عندكم إياه وكل شيء عم بتقوله. Okay? Please, please. لا لا ما حدا قال إنه impolite. You're not أنا 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 ما قلت impolite. قلت respectful. If you want to take it into that direction, you can take it. Whatever you want, it's yours. It's yours. We have we have. Sorry, we have this lady behind the cameraman. Please. تفضل. ايه انا كنت عم جاوب هيدا السؤال مالي لحظه 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 انتم حكومه انتم الاولى الاولى كلها بايديكم ايه معك حق 100% هيدا واحد من القرارات اللي رح يتاخذوا بس خليك دقيقه انه عم بيبيعوا مي وعم بيعملوا مثل ما بدهم وما حدا عم بيقول لهم وينكم يعني أوكي. من وين عم بيجيبوا مي اذا ما في مي بلبنان بتلاقي كل ثانيه عم بيطلع كاميون ستار مي عم بيبيع مي وما حدا عم بيقول لهم وينكم انا معك 100% بس بقول لك شغله وزاره الطاقه ما عندها ما عندها الجهاز يعني بالمعدات تبعها ما فيها هي تروح تعطي ظبوطه او تعمل يعني تقمع تقمع المخالفات نحن مش بالموضع تبعنا هيدي شغلة وزارة البل... وزارة الداخلية اوكي سو so, وزارة الداخلية هي اللي لازم تلحق هالاشياء بس كمان في شغلة تانية انه نحن ما فينا نعرف وين في الليجل ويل اذا ما اجينا شكوى نروح بنلحق كل واحد على البلوت تبعه بنقول له عندك الليجل ويل ولا لا بدنا شكاوى وبدنا كمان يصير في وعي عند الناس انه هالاشياء إذا عندها بروسيدور ليجال بروسيدور اوفيسيال تنعمل في صارت معروفة إنه في في بيرميتس بينعطوا للويلز ليه الأشخاص ما بيجوا بيتقدموا يا بيسووا وضعهم يا بي بي بيطلبوا بيرميت للويل في كلتشر كمان ناقصة عند الشعب تبعنا مش بس كل الحق على الدولة Okay, please. Hold on, hold on. Suzy, Suzy. Sorry, young man. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I'm I'm نشتغل على الوضع. I'm نشتغل. Sorry. I'm نشتغل. I'm نشتغل. طيب. ما 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 تعطوا مجال لغيركم يسأل please. Yes. في the lady and then Lama. Yes. Okay. So I again want to add to the. You have asked twice. The 60-plus year obsolete assumption that water somehow gets magically wasted um, when, um, unless we put in a dam. 
Um, water does not get wasted when it's left to its natural hydrological cycle, but rather water gets wasted when large infra inducting infrastructures um, ruin, the, uh, cause eutrophication of the rivers, prevent fish and um, wildlife from freely th flowing through, and um, consequently dry up rivers, um, which has happened in dams all across the world and is the primary reason why they're being deconstructed in the Western world today. Um, second, if there is a problem with governance um, in Lebanon, which there definitely is, everyone in this room knows that there is, um, that has been unable to um, conduct any data surveying our surplus of groundwater since 1970, a green and very manageable alternative to building um, dam infrastructures. Um, then why don't we take this into account, or why don't we take into account um, the illegal wells, um, as we are talking about, um, that are much easier to enforce this than rely on a private agent, international agency enforcing itself. Um, secondly, I'd like to add that um, there is a proven track record of the World Bank um, not being a substitute for the failure of governance of third world countries, but rather taking advantage of the lack of governance in third world countries, which has produced a 150% GDP to debt ratio in Lebanon today. Um, why should we rely on the Bistri Dam, which is estimating to endanger 20 villages, multiple valleys, and 1.5 million trees, which will dry up um, our rivers and valleys? Um, and rely on the fox guarding the hen house in this case. Can Third, you make it um, quick, please. One more comment, quick comment. Um, the problems in water in occupied Palestine and Jordan aren't a problem of sharing. It is a problem of occupation and illegal extraction by an occupying entity. Thank you. Lama, and then we have uh, the <coughs> Is that gentleman because he has not asked before. And then, yes, Hi, I'm Lama Abdesamad. Um, recommendation Nadim, I think you should have another conference on dams and no dams <laughs> moving forward. Um, I guess I would like to ask a, a more governance related question. And, and the, the, you know, Nadim, you, you asked something on, on the accountability, and your response was more, more around accountability with the private sector. And I think this accountability question is very big and very broad, and you can take it to whatever level within a governance thinking. And, um, well, I'm curious. What are, what are the accountability mechanisms and criteria that you put on governments that are benefiting substantially. Because, I mean, the World Bank does come with a, a huge political clout because of the massive investments that you put into, into countries. And to encourage, um, uh, well, I would say, to encourage uh, improved governance. Every country in the world has problems with governance. I'm not saying Lebanon is ideal, <laughs> far from, but uh, everyone has areas of improvement. And I think, does the World Bank do that? Do they put um, accountability reform um, criteria on governments? Do you enforce them? Do you see impacts of them? And, I mean, are there benefits that come? Or is it, because I mean, I mean, like, you put these things and then sometimes they're just like ticking boxes. Or is it really impactful? Or do we need to start thinking of, of new ways of enforcing reform on, on governments that we heavily invest in? And we, you know, and you, and I don't know if you got, I guess you got my question, yes. So let us get some answers first, and, and then, then uh, we'll, we'll do a final round before concluding. Uh, stop the down! 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 Stop the down!
وراكم ابحاثكم كلهم عمل ضده وراو ابحاث بس انتم ما بدكم تسمعوا حدا هيدا خياركم كناس جايين تطبقوا مشروعكم الخاص نحن ضد هذا المشروع وضد كل شيء عم يعملوا رواد بلدنا لا في مستعدين Thank you. Okay. I will answer you because you are sitting in the room. A couple of issues. A couple of issues. I think when it comes to the whole institution, the discussion, you are absolutely right. the transparency of all of those who are interacting with the citizen. The whole, the whole engagement with various ministries, service ministries, need to be, need to be strengthened. And all that actually feeds into what, exactly what you mentioned, and that is a place where you would have ليزي <تصفيق> في عالم ساكن المونيك كمان رح تتهجر من بيوتها العالم ما لها قيمه والاثار ما لها قيمه والطبيعه ما لها قيمه معقول؟ If if you can stay in the room I would like us to have a dialogue. The archaeology is handled by the DGA, the Directorate of Genoma. And we are we are doing the excavation and the preservation and everything is done to be sure that all this Be it for drinking water, be it for the environment, be it for the social users. 
So I just wanted to say that we have also all the discussion on environment safeguards, in cultural heritage, in archaeology, in dam safety, etc. And we really want to this discussion. I don't want to take more, more time, but I really want to ask the task team leader since I am, I, I am uh, really discussing on that. We're open to do the follow up and ready to do it at any time and any platform. So, Yes, we've got the gentleman back there and uh, the, second, the second round. Thank you. Um, my name is Dag Wong and uh, I'm from Geneva, Switzerland. Uh, I was pretty animated, I have to say. <laughs> question to, to you, but uh, it's also a message to everyone. Um, I have a non-profit called Water Inception, and uh, I founded it after discovering a technology that uh, is able to condense the humidity from the air and turn it into drinkable water. When I discovered this technology uh, in Spain, I decided to, to find a way to use it for humanitarian purposes because Personally, the, the reason I grew up in Switzerland is because my parents are refugees from Vietnam and were able to relocate there. Um, and I always wanted to do something for the refugees. So two years ago, I came to Tripoli to, see, to visit the refugee camp. And uh, when I saw the situation of the water, I uh, decided to, to raise some money to buy a machine uh, to bring it to the camp. So right now, the machine is in the harbor of Beirut. I'm facing some issues to get it out because I didn't expect to have to pay so much taxes, but that's my issue. Um, but I was wondering if uh, the World Bank or maybe an organization around here would be interested to know more about this technology because I believe it can help the country and you know all the people facing water scarcity to have a bit of more water independence. The, the, the advantage with the air is that you know, it doesn't belong to anyone, the air is, is free, and there's a lot of humidity, there's, there's trillions of liters in the air, and I believe such technology can, could be helping uh, to save a lot of lives and maybe also reduce the need to build dams, I don't know if really, but, um, so that's, that's a mission that I'm throwing to, to everyone, and if somebody would like to know more of information about um, my organization and uh, the machine, uh, please come to me after the event. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, uh, just uh, since the conversation is coming to an end, I would I would like uh, to take uh, an opportunity to give a quick in in half a minute uh, some alternative to Bisri Dam. Uh, please. Okay. Yeah, we have a. We have a rejection specifically on Mr. Dan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, we had, uh, uh, I know uh, Ms. Susie and uh, respect Susie. Uh, I, had ma I had followed up uh, with this uh, too many, uh, too many uh, experts. And uh, I heard too many, uh, and, uh, I heard too many uh, verbal studies. I, I don't have studies like, except from one, uh, uh, one consultant. Uh, the problem of the uh, government is that he is relying to one type of consultants. And the consultants are in fact contractors because they are paid to give a study. So we have uh, met another studies talking about, uh, uh, talking about the uh, underground rivers, for example, Israeli on the border, they discovered tunnels for Hezbollah. The tunnels are full of air, so they're not full of water. So the same technology can be used to get tunnels like, uh, like uh, for example, like Jaita Grotto. There is another Jaita Grotto somewhere in another mountain. We can make an investment and uh, discover it. So this is one, one type. Another, this, another alternative you can have, like, like desalination, when you have to pay two, $2 billion dollars to get water from, uh, from south to Beirut, you can make a desalination plant just on Beirut, on the coast, 
for example, in the worst case scenario, we can have a desalination plant. So there is too many, sir, too many alternatives. We can go through it. And there is too many experts. I'm not an expert. I'm just an engineer. And we can, uh, we can, make a disc uh, we can provide you with a contact for this expert. And thank you, Susie. Uh, we can contact you uh, later on for, for that. have been looked at, desalination is not the uh, least expensive uh, system you can put uh, neither in operation and maintenance, neither in, cap uh, in CAPEX as capital. Okay, so it's, it's not a, a, a very feasible uh, solution. But then uh, going into the mountains and finding uh, grottos like Jaita Grotto, يعني, it's going to take us like uh, another uh, 100 years to find uh, such a... Uh, uh, such a grotto. So, so let's let's be uh, sensible and let's talk logical and be scientific and hear the other side. Now we are discussing amongst ourselves and we are all uh, we all agree on the same point of view. Whereas those who should be listening a bit to the other uh, side just left the room, which is which is a very bad sign of their intentions as well. So. Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave it uh, here. And uh, thank you, Dr. Nadim. Thank you, Mr. Balhaj. And uh, oh, you're still here. Very good. Can you answer? Yes, yes, yes. No, Lemma's question again is is a very fundamental one because as I'm, uh, I was starting to uh, engage earlier, you have two streams. One is when we talk about specific projects. And this is what I was mentioning earlier in terms of all the safeguards we have vis-a-vis -vis, you know, private sector, uh, possibility of corruption, possibility of mismanagement of funds, etc. And this is something that we, we, we deal with. There is also something that is much broader and deeper. And this is you know, basically how we engage with the state, state institutions. So when we talk about uh, you know, having contestability, you know, uh, <coughs> Engaging with strengthening the judiciary, engaging with, strength, with strengthening, you know, the you know, uh, uh, institutions that reinforce the liability or the in, you know, the interface between the the, 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 the the government and the government institutions and the citizen. These are issues that we deal with, and these are is a, these are issues that we we work on. Now, the the, the it's not a problem, but the, the reality is that this is not instant coffee. You know that this, uh, these are long-term, you know, in engagement, and because they are long-term, we need to start years ago, and we need to start today. You know, in places where you don't have checks and balances, in places where you know government and government institutions are not necessarily accountable vis-à-vis -vis citizens, or in places where you don't have. You know, the, uh, the institution, judicial institution, like administrative tribunals, uh, all the institutions that have to do with, you know, the way governments are managing themselves, managing public, uh, public finances, etc. Either you don't have them or they are weak. And these are where, this is where we engage. In all of the, of the countries, we have, you know, not only specific programs, but also triggers, you know, when, when we engage in these, in these governments. So, Again, going back to, uh, to, 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 to the first point I was making, very much upstream, we want to make sure that each one of the operations that the bank finances is really going by a very clear and strict set of, set of uh, um, you know, uh, both triggers and, 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 and processes to make every single one of those as transparent as it can be, one. Second, we need to have contestability. If the contestability is not ready in country, we will be the ones engaging so that we have that transparency. At the end of the day, what we want is for each one of the dollars that are, is either granted or lent to a specific country, there is accountability. We need to make sure that that, that exists. So, you know, you, you, you need to have these, these two-pronged approach, one that is more of a broader, deeper, longer term, and constant adjournment of it, and the other one that has to do with a specific project to, so that you can get transparency and honesty in it. Please. So it is, it is, it is not, 
You do not place preconditions of reform for investment. Of course we do. Of course the we you do. do. Of okay. course we uh, do. Yeah. Yeah, please. In these new financing uh, and these new finances, especially within the SEDR conference, they are, uh, we started already uh, in this um, uh, type of, uh, uh, of um, reform with the World Bank in the energy sector based on KPIs. You get disperse, disbursements based on performance indicators. Uh, once you, once we are, um, or once the World Bank and the third party makes, makes sure that this uh, step has been taken uh, till the end, as it should be, disbursements are, uh, are done. This is in, in the energy sector, and this will be in all of the other sectors as well, and the water sector definitely later on. So this is a very uh, motivating type of... Uh, of uh, okay. It's good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think... Is there any more? Yes. That I think Ms. Khitem Bikun Mark. But then we will close because we're very close to uh, the, the time limits that we have. Thanks for putting pressure on me. Uh, um, yeah, so just from the, my small experience with working with water establishments, for example, I can tell you the example that the directors and, see, and many staff and many people working with the establishments, as I can see familiar faces here, will tell you. The most corrupt, incapable, inept, uh, underperforming people at these establishments make nearly no procedural mistakes. So when you tell me about checks and balances to account for every dollar, mm. I can understand it, that resonates in my ear and I can see the faces of the people who make no procedural mistakes but don't drive the utility one step forward. Mm. If anything, they pull it back. So procedural safeguards are definitely necessary for, for the project and to account for the money, but I don't see them pointing towards what actually Suzy just mentioned in terms of KPIs, which is, my question is, you have been here, uh, the World Bank has been here for a while, but if we look at the last two plus decades, and I asked this question last Wednesday, and sorry to take more of your time, but I didn't get a clear answer then even. Do you have, in some way, independent evaluations of value for money, of the money you put in over the last two decades? It's efficiency, effectiveness, life cycle costs, all these parameters for the last two decades. And then looking at that transparently, do you then decide how you invest in the future? Because you've done similar projects in the last two plus decades. You should be able to look at them and say, I, it might be that the World Bank is doing its job and its responsibility, but maybe the partner of the World Bank, be it the state or private sector or anyone else, just doesn't work. Thank you. Look, you know, frankly, it is, it is a very good question, and it's not just Lebanon, it's all over. <clears throat> First of all, we have, <clears throat> we have our own independent eval evaluation. You know, we have people who are actually, you know, our policemen, in a way. So, and, they, and they look at projects that have, that have closed, and they look at the performance, they look at the fiduciary element of it, and the, the, there are missions that can come even on the, you know, to the field and look at what exactly has been realized. So we have that, and, it, and we take that very much on board, and we actually you know, frame our you know, projects down the road on the basis of the lessons learned there. That's, that's, that's for sure. Now, we always have, because this, this is really the mission of the bank. We are a development agency. You know, we are not here to make money. Actually, if you look at you know, what, what, you know, the, the, the way our finances work, you know, we lend money, true, in a number of countries, Lebanon, for instance, but the money we lend is at rates that, that, that only allow for the World Bank to keep functioning. We are not making money out of those projects. No, no, I'm, what I'm saying? No, 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 I get you, get you, get you. I'm, 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 just, I'm just getting one, one, one step uh, at a time. One, when we lend money, it is not for profit. So we want to make sure that the only profit is, that is made out of you know, the loan that we make and the project that we finance is the profit that is a developmental profit going to the people that are supposed to be the subject and the object of our, of our, of our project. Not at all to make other people profit out of those. So yeah, I don't know whether you see what, 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 what I mean. We are not getting into a place where the World Bank is actually 
financing projects that would allow people to make money. We are financing projects that are, have one aim, that is development of a particular sector or of a particular activity for the people who are supposed to be receiving those projects. You see what I mean? No, 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 I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not going to get as an accusation. I'm just trying, trying to explain that we have people, we have independent evaluation. Those independent evaluation produce reports. We engage with them, we draw lessons from them, and then we engage. That's what I'm saying, okay? So we do exactly what you were mentioning to me, meaning that, you know, do you guys take a look at what's happening? Do you guys have a, re can, do you have a reality check? And then we take, yes, a reality check, and we you know, take on board the lessons from that, that reality check. We reconfigure or reframe our projects and our engagement in that particular sector, in that particular, particular country, and we move forward. So the point I was making, the second point I was making is that we are not stopping from engaging with those countries when we find out that there is a problem. We fix the problem and we keep moving. That's the point I was making. Uh, I think, <laughs> yes, your friend, I realize. Yes. Uh, we've reached the end uh, of, for today. We have some coffee and uh, some petit four to you know, soften the, uh, the engagement here. And uh, we'd like to welcome you there. Thank you for putting up with us and staying here. Thank you. Thank you.